Welcome to our blog. We're going to have a look at how does the introduction of ISO 45001 affect our organisation, particularly if we have a management system built around the old Australian New Zealand standard for safety management systems, 4801. Whether we're certified or just built to that, what's happening with this new standard? ISO 45001 has obviously been released in about May 2018. It has now been officially adopted in Australia by Standards Australia. Interestingly though, and there are reasons behind this, they haven't yet officially withdrawn or announced a migration period for the old standard. Uh, 4801. There is some laws in some states where they do reference the Australian standard 4801 and regulators ha have no particular motivation to withdraw that reference. I understand that's part of why Standards Australia hasn't withdrawn that as yet. If and when they do, yes they will make an announcement and there is always a migration or transition period to allow you to move across to the new ISO standard. You may choose to make that transition before that announcement. Some of the reasons for doing that is obviously if you have management system built around any other ISO management system standards, food safety, quality, environment, then this safety standard has exactly the same structure as those standards. So your ability to integrate it is definitely a big opportunity. We've got a blog and if you look at our resources page we've got a full summary of what's actually changed between the two standards. Rather than write them all up we'll just focus on one and how we could actually transition to the new standard. If you have a safety system based on the old standard you don't have to throw that out and start again by any means. I also made it quite clear that yes they were basing this standard and drawing on good practice from existing standard. To extend that, if you pick up 45001, yes there's a smaller number of what I would call new requirements where there's no standalone equivalent under 4801. There's a range of other requirements where yes there is an equivalent under 4801 but there might have been some slight modification. The process and the approach I'll take you through here will help you with both of those cases. Let's take an example of one of the newer requirements where there is no real equivalent for 4.1 under the new standard versus 4801. I'll just draw it up a step before we look at this. Number one, we are going to need to take the step of understanding the changes and what's been modified. Step number two would be educating your leadership team because particularly around leadership there are some extended responsibilities. As a third step we're going to talk about a gap analysis, a very simple little tool we often use with customers to understand okay if there's a new requirement Let's use 4.1 from this standard here which is about understanding the organisation its context and basically conduct a gap analysis or it's essentially an audit where we take that new requirement, we put a series of questions into a checklist about that. I've got a very simple example there so 4.1 really out of the crux of that it's saying well are there internal or external issues that could affect our intended performance of our safety system. So as a checklist question we could reflect that have internal and external issues been identified a really good approach is to say don't assume that you've got no business processes or safety processes that might be contributing to meeting that. You don't have to start from scratch. So in a gap analysis you can plot out what do we have in place that contributes to meeting that requirement. And as a second question there, well is there any gaps, is there anything missing, anything where we need to take further action to fully meet that particular new requirement. Do the same with the modified requirements. Very simple little example here, yes where actions are required you can simply turn the rest of it into a bit of an action plan. When are you going to address it and who's going to do that? You can go to our resources page, there is a download for all the documented information which is ISO's terms for mandatory documents and records under ISO 45001. There is a summary of not only all of the new requirements but all of those modified requirements. In our next blog we're going to come back and look at what recurrent activities as an organisation be required to do under ISO 45001. If you like this video then hit the like button below, why not even share it with your friends, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, appreciate you listening and keep an eye out for our next video.